So I'm going to try and make the mask that we were looking at on Friday that we never really got around to. Um, I've got a, uh, I've started a mask. Here are some lines sitting on level one. I'm going to actually highlight them in 3D and go to level one. Uh, copy to clipboard. I'm going to go to level 30 and paste into the current view. Remember, same place. We'll put it back down on level one. Current view puts it in the same X, Y space in the current level. And I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to try and actually make half of the form and show you how to manipulate some of these, uh, ang these uh, weird twisties and that, that uh, appear. And at this point in my life, they're unpredictable, but maybe we'll get a, we'll get a sense, we'll all get a sense of predictability in these. So I'm going to trim out these lines and create just a simple square on top. And if I go to 3D, you see what we've got here is a square sitting off sides, uh, way above, hovering above this uh, kind of double diamond shaped. So we've got those two shapes. I'm going to highlight them both and create a form. And it's sort of making not quite what I want to do. What I wanted to do is I wanted this bird's beak to travel up to this corner. So we're going to try and see if we can make that happen. When you highlight the form, uh, we can either have x-ray on or not. I like the x-ray because it highlights uh, the nodes at the corners of each form. At least I think we can do it without the x-ray on, but I'm going to turn it on for now. I'm going to click the Add Edge. Now, Add Edge, remember, it can remove, it can actually tessellate a form by going corner to corner and remove a twist. In this case, we do have all flat edges, but I want to reorganize them somewhat. And um, so what I'm going to do is see if I can't sort of trick it to doing what I want to do. So I'm going to create an edge here, which is just a, an edge on a, on a flat surface. These two are coplanar. Then I come over to this edge and get rid of it. So now I've actually imparted a twist, uh, which is counterintuitive, but let's, let's see what we can do next. I'm going to add another edge, take that twist out, and now I've got this surface and this surface, which I, I believe are coplanar. Yeah, they're coplanar. Then I'm going to come back in. See, I've added this edge, and I'm going to remove this one. So in a kind of sneaky way, I've gone in and, and sort of taken this, uh, this gouge and moved it from here over to here. And let's see if we can do it on the other side as well. It's now mirrored, and I'm kind of losing my sense of how to do this. But I'll grab my shape, add an edge, go from here to here grab another edge, delete it. Now I've got my twisty. And for some reason it's giving me a, a warning now that it no longer determines a plane. It didn't give me that on the other side. I don't know why. We'll grab our edge again, add a profile, and oh gosh, where am I going from? No, I'm adding an edge, sorry, not a profile. Hmm, rivets thinking hard about this one. So I'll go from here down to here. And I've now uh, tessellated that, that curve shape. These guys, I believe this guy and this guy are coplanar. This guy and this guy are coplanar. So I'm going to grab this sort of seam in between them, this false seam, and delete it. And there's that, uh, that gouge. So I think that this method will actually enable us to make um, the shapes you, you guys were trying to achieve. If this form is mirrored on itself diagonally, I think that will arrive at the shape, but I'm going to let you try and tease that one out.